What's up Lego Builders? Welcome back to Coconut Brick Studios. When I woke up this morning, I just didn't feel right. My hands were shaky, my forehead was sweaty, and I knew I need my clone base fix. So today, I'm attempting to build three clone bases in three very different terrains. I'm pushing my limits to see how big I can actually build, and I'm also debuting some unique minifigs I've never built with before. So if you're still not tired of watching me shamelessly mill clone base content, don't forget to execute order 66 on that like button, and let's get building. Normally I start a challenge with the smallest build and go bigger from there, but not today. I have big plans for this first one and need a lot of space to construct a massive refinery slash fueling base on the planet Malastare. This planet is home to the Doug species, one of which famously lost to Anakin Skywalker during the Boon to Eve pod race. But even more importantly, this planet is home to massive fuel reserves, which the Republic is obviously very interested in hanging on to in order to keep their massive democracy spreading machine on the move. And in my opinion, it would make sense to have some big old heavily armed clone bases protecting the harvesting and transportation of said liquid gold in order to keep it out of the Separatist and other unsavory characters' hands, as we'll see in a bit. So I'm going to attempt to combine an oil refinery and clone base into a massive democracy pumping behemoth. I'm starting by constructing my now very familiar paneled wall system, which which involves building large pillars and placing long panels between them and creating the base walls without needing a lot of brick. The panels can be placed at any angle I want and the tiled front looks more detailed than brick walls would allow me to attach other greebling pieces and builds to help the base look even more complex and realistic. On the inside, I built walls to cover up the back side of the panels and these 1x2x5 bricks have been coming in clutch for filler work. Unfortunately, this is a big base and I need to move on fast so I don't have time to add any greebling to the inner walls. I also made sure to add dark red highlights and when possible, the Republic logo to further sell the fact that this is indeed a Republic base and not a Space Walmart or Dexter's Diner pop-up. The shell of the base is done and now I just need to finish the tops of the walls and I guess a door so the bad guys can't get in or whatever. Most of you guys know traditionally doors have been one of my weaknesses especially when it comes to bases but all this practice I've been getting recently has gotten my door making muscles looking like Kit Fisto's abs. I switched over to brick for this portion because I want a stronger looking wall since a fortification is only as strong as its entrance so I want to make sure this one can weather a serious assault and I have some different shapes I want to capture. When building clone bases I found it helps to work dark bluish gray highlights in with your main color. This prevents your mock from looking too bland and gives the feeling that different materials were used thus producing a more interesting looking finished result. But the problem I have with brick built walls is they're very smooth and boring, so I'm adding some pipes and panels to provide some texture and break up the smoothness. Plus, you can never have too many pipes and vents on a base. The door is going to be less of a door and more of a laser gate. I know that's not the most practical thing in the world, but man, it looks cool. I'll have trans light blue bricks connected to these headlight bricks at intervals running up the tunnel entrance. And while this could provide enemies a way to shoot at people inside, they'd have to get right up to the base first, and as you'll see in a bit, this isn't your typical base entrance. Although this type of gate's definitely going to run up the Republic's electric bill. Even with how simple I went, this base shell took way longer than I was planning. No joke, I spent almost my entire morning building it. But at last, I finished up the front and the doorway is in, looking better than I'd hoped. Now it's time to turn my sights inward and begin the refinery portion. To do that, let's talk trains. While quaint looking Thomas the Tank Engine type models certainly don't exist in the Star Wars galaxy, there are trains being used and I thought that would be a cool way to transport the fuel out of the base and to the transport ships. I built a set of tracks running through the middle of the base and out the gate. This next part had me the most excited as I love building industrial technical stuff. I used large quarter cylinders to create three storage tanks to hold the fuel and dump it into the trains. And let's be real, this is probably not even close to how an actual refinery or storage plant operates, but I'm going for aesthetic over function on this one. I've driven by a fair number of refinery plants in my day and there are always tons of lights on so I'm going to place lights and yellow caution strips around the pipes to protect the clones from any workplace related accidents. Plus this bad boy needs a pop of color. It was around this point I started to realize I'd bitten off way more than I could chew with this base. I still had two more bases to complete for this video and this one has already eaten up so much time. But I still managed to put together a train. Now before you laugh or puke at what you're seeing, remember I'm not a vehicle builder and was already feeling stressed and behind. So I scraped together the bare minimum of a build comprising of a cab for the driver and a tank bed to hold the fuel. In my head I was trying to build something similar to the Imperial hover tank but well, you can see that didn't really happen. Realistically, a train like this would be longer or pull multiple cars behind it, but this isn't a detailed mock series and I figured you'd get the idea of what's going on with this. The three silos will all be connected to a central spigot that protrudes out over the tracks. I wish I had more Technic pipe pieces, especially the elbow ones, but I had to make do with some headlight bricks to act as corners. I wish I hadn't been so focused on building as big as possible so I had more time for technical builds like this, but you know what they say, the bigger the better, unless it comes to battle stations, I guess. 
At this point, I wanted to throw in the towel and be done with this mock, but I'm no quitter, so I put on my building pants and threw together one last mediocre build. The clones still need a place to stay, so I'm building a mobile barracks or command station. Kind of like that mobile command base I built last year, I've always been intrigued by the idea of mobile bases or modules that can be quickly assembled and transported anywhere. So since this refinery was either quickly constructed or hastily transformed into a base, I figured something like this would fit right in. At last, the base is done and now I just need to arm it. I don't know that tubes of explosives are the best thing to guard a base full of highly combustible liquid. At least they're outside. It's not like there's sparks or flame inside the base. Bruh. I decided to treat myself and use my Doom Legion clone since I don't get to use them often enough. And just when I thought I was done and could move on, I realized I forgot the laser gate. And since I was still building at this point, I figured I might as well throw in some terrain, which actually improved the overall mock more than I thought it would. The sun beats down on Malastare as one of the automatic defense systems activates and sends missiles shooting out towards some incoming drones as Commander Doom takes a report on the situation. Apparently, it was just a couple drones scouting out the area, but something doesn't feel right. He decides to call up a task force and do a sweep of the perimeter just to be safe. Meanwhile, a group of mercenaries use the confusion of the drone attack to sneak up to the base and lay in wait to hop on and commandeer one of the exiting trains, which can hold a small fortune's worth of fuel. The question is, will Doom and his men get there in time before the bounty hunters can finish their heist. I'm surprised the base turned out as good as it did. Building this reminded me of that horse meme. It started out great and by the time I got to the end it was reduced to a stick figure level of detail. But the core idea wasn't the problem, I just didn't have enough time. If I'd been able to dedicate more to this build it would have looked much better. However, there is a little detail added to the interior where this clone accidentally overheard Anakin and Padme on a diplomatic hollow call in the barracks. <laughs> I learned my lesson with the first base and decided to go with detail over size for this next one which is located on a very desolate and barren outer rim planet. I'm doing just a single gray base plate and I want this one to be much smoother so I'm covering most of it with a snot landing pad for gunships, transports, and food delivery vehicles. I swiped some chunks of my Megito mock to construct the actual base. I've been using this technique of placing towers of cylinders between brick walls and connecting them together with rounded 1x2 plates. This allows me to bend and curve the wall into almost any shape I want. So I connected two wall chunks to a doorway and just like that I have a round foundational wall that has some nice texture to it. This base is located on the planet of Orto Plutonia, which is not known for much other than its giant warlike alien species, the Talls, who look like a Sasquatch and an anteater had a baby. Not Hoth, as I like to call it, is a very cold and desolate, so I want to build a very low to the ground, well insulated structure capable of bearing the brunt of snowstorms and high winds. I want to have multiple entrances in case some get buried or disabled by snow since we don't want any clones getting stuck outside and trying to pull the old Tauntaun tent with a Tall's warrior to try and survive the night. I'm building two tunnels that'll branch off from the main build and even though they're brick built, I made sure to add lots of slopes to the front and top to help them plane into the main structure and just overall look better. I tiled everything off since a big letdown from the last base was all the exposed studs, so this time around more studs will be covered up. I built a couple vents since air ventilation and heating is going to be super vital here since the clones can't just crack a window to get some fresh air. These two tunnels fit into the base almost perfectly and I can already tell this is going to be a much more complex looking base than the last one. Let me know in the comments what you think of this one so far. The biggest downside to building these curved walls is trying to figure out how to put a second story or roof on that matches the overall shape. Luckily I have a lot of these large quarter slopes I can use to build the command center. I don't know if you've noticed but I've been flooded with a bunch of great pieces all of a sudden and that's because I'm finally in the process of sorting out my giant Megito mock and the gray parts are flowing like Boombas during the Battle of Naboo. This challenge when constructing this command center, or really any I've built, is what to do for the windows. I often use molded pieces, but then there's a lot of seams in the glass and some of the pieces are too big and create a cartoonish looking result. So this time around, I decided to try something I've seen quite a few other people do, which is recreating these classic crisscross windows seen in pretty much every large Republic or Imperial ship. I connected some one by two brackets at an angle to one by one clips to get that V shape and then repeated that across the window opening and you know what? I actually really like this technique. I've always been hesitant to build cockpits or windows without using some kind of trans clear piece but this looks so much more detailed than anything I could do with window pieces and it's not hard to just picture these as being glass windows so this opens up a lot of great ideas for future mocks. I added the other command station essentials and this command post is ready to oversee base operations. The last big hurdle is locking the snot pad in place. I filled in the rest of the base with white brick then plated it off the seam with snow. There's no snow on the pad since it's heated to prevent any accidental ice skating mishaps. And this being a clone base means there has to be turrets of some kind and I bought three Tall's Warriors just for this mock so make sure to hit that like button to show these minifigs some love. Alarms Blair is a group of Tall's Warriors burst out of the snowy night ambushing a Republic base. An unfortunate clone making his way inside 
side was taken by surprise, but luckily, Rex and his 501st had just returned from a patrol and burst outside in their special suits to engage the enemy. Republic Command scans the surrounding area for more attackers, and the base is put on high alert. Up until now, the Tals and Republic had been on good terms, so the sudden attack and new weapons being wielded has the clones wondering if this is some kind of Separatist ploy to take the base. I love how this mock looks. I really want to revisit this design sometime, but build the entire thing at a larger scale and not just the front. I normally struggle to enclose bases, which is why most of mine are open topped, but this one was roofed off very nicely and has ample room inside for clones checking supplies, preparing for an attack, and running training simulations, I guess. I'm most happy with the overall shape. The rounded front and protruding sides combined with the greebling, windows, and stickers all blend together perfectly. So. About that third base I mentioned, it never happened. The refinery build took up so much time and as I was planning the last one, I realized it could be so much cooler if I waited and dedicated an entire video to building it. Since of the three, it has by far the most unique and interesting location. I didn't want to rush the build just so I could cram it into this challenge, so stay tuned for that video in the future. But next week, I'm taking Star Wars bases to a whole new level and diving into why no one builds droid bases and attempting one of my own. But that wraps up this video. Don't forget to let me know which of these bases was your favorite in the comments and I'll catch you next time but until then happy building.